Good morning. Welcome to Lawyer v. Lawyer. This is Debbie Champion and... Gary Berger. Hey, Debbie. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Good. I had a question for you. Tell it. So, so I, uh, we talked a minute before we got on the record. I want to talk about social media, but not generally. Social media specifically in three areas. One, social media in the last year. Two, how do you use social media in investigations and and social media, the plaintiff? And then you wanted to ask me one. And what was the one I on social media you wanted to ask me? whether or not you investigate jurors on social media. All right. So let's take it one at a time. Since I started, let me go first. Um, what, do you, what do you do to investigate the plaintiff generally and and specifically with social media and how do you use that either to leverage a settlement or at trial okay so I, I will tell you that we do not on every single case investigate the plaintiff I will investigate a plaintiff that I think is exaggerating their injury and if I don't get anything from their testimony that makes me think they're exaggerating I generally don't spend a lot of time or money trying to investigate them but if I'm suspicious <clears throat> then we will either investigate it ourselves, which frankly I think we're better at it than the social media companies but there are companies out there that you can hire to run an entire social media search and it's not just Facebook and Instagram and whatever else Twitter, it's also Google. You know, they'll find articles and stuff that this person's in and just historical information on it. So, so when I find the appropriate case for it, I do investigate. Okay. Uh, and your next point. Oh, no, let, well, let, let's just stay with you? this for a okay. minute, though. So, can I tell you my two funny stories yeah. about that? Yeah. Here's two. One is I had a case where the guy, a med mal case I'm looking at, the la- oh, no, the lady wants to sue the lawyer. It's a combo med mal, and they dismiss the case, and a legal mal, and I'm looking at it, and then I find, and, and their husband became paralyzed, and he can't walk ever again, da-da-da-da-da-da-da, and then I call up oh, another no. lawyer who's a friend of mine who who came into the case and then left it because he figured out what was going on, and then the case was against the lawyer who kept it, and... And and you and you know this other lawyer. He's a, he's a great stand-up lawyer in the community. And I called him up and I said, "What? Why'd you get? Why'd you back out of this case? Because I'm looking at it." And he said, "He goes, did you not look this up?" And I go, "What?" And he said, "Hold on." And he emailed me and he sent me an article from some a, a rural newspaper about a miracle recovery about this guy can walk again and he's totally not injured. So oh, that's my that's hilarious. And then the second, the, well, I have a couple, I have a lot of social media stories, but the second one I'll tell you is the guy, my client who, it was a very high profile case that I ended up uh, uh, backing out of the case later uh, without going into detail, uh, um, uh, uh, but very high profile. And, and, and my client posted on social media um, um, uh, glad to be going back to work after an eight month vacation. And I called him up and I said, remember you weren't working for eight months because of your injury, not because it was a vacation, you know? Yeah. So, you know, that's the kind of bad stuff. Yeah, that's bad. Um, I also had a case where I was deposing a plaintiff, a, d- a defendant, and she was so remorseful, blah, blah, blah. And I pulled up her Facebook and I literally asked her, did you get on the uh, I like to drink so who gives an F uh, group on Facebook two weeks after you crashed this car and ga- gave my client this brain d- damage? Uh, and I showed it to her and her proclamations about being sorrowful turned to dust because she was lying. Right. She, was, she was doubling down on her bad drinking history. So those wow. are quick, three quick stories. That's interesting. So you do search for the defendant sometimes. I And I search for my own clients. Yeah, that's smart. Do you search the defendants every time? Not every. If it, it's the same with you. If it's a big case, if I yeah. suspect there's something going on, yeah. if it's worth it, I'll do a little bit before a depo or before yeah. a trial. I will, um, uh, if 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 it matters. Um, but a lot of times too, I'm not suing an individual defendant. I want to make it a systems case against a company type of thing. But uh, but sometimes I do. Let me ask you this though on this topic. Do you worry that a jury's going to get mad at you 
for nosing into someone's business. Absolutely, I worry about that. So tell me, what's the worry and what do you do to address it? You have to be really, really careful with it because if you don't have anything really, really good, it's offensive. You know, it's offensive. I'm not their friend. I don't have access to that normally, even though they've got public settings and I can see it. But it's, it's, it, people don't like it, just like they don't like surveillance. You know, jurors never really like surveillance. They don't think that's good. Unless you find something, then they love well, it, Well, they right? sometimes do, but they still can get mad about it. So, okay. But, you know, if you don't find something, you just don't use it. Same thing with photos. If you don't find something. But I'm talking about stuff you really want to get in, but you're afraid they're going to use it. And I'll tell you two memories that I have of how I used it. And um, so let me tell you one thing that you may not know before I get to those two stories, and that is... Back in the day, probably five years ago, when we did social media searches, you could find out by looking at the photograph when the photograph was taken. All these social media sites have scrubbed that information now. So now we're getting a lot of false positives, things that are put up on Facebook in a timeline at a date that looks like it is post-accident, when in reality the photo was from the past. You have to really watch that because you can look like a fool at trial if you try to get that up. So a lot of times I don't like to show them. Like a memory photograph that you think is current, but it's from five years ago. Yes, yes. So you have to be really careful about that. I've seen those over and over and over again. And if I have a question about it, then I don't use it. But, um, But you have to, you know, sometimes you have to ask them in the depot, when was this taken? And when that occurs, then... You can't use that stuff. So be careful about that because I think people like to surprise people with Facebook and Instagram info. So um, the two ways that I got, I had one case, which was a brain damage case, young girl. The story, and she was a doll, and the story was that she had um, a horrible college experience because of this injury that she couldn't ever go out to have any fun. She did have a boyfriend, but all they did was spend time in the library. You can see where this is going. And yet on her friends' social media accounts, there was one party picture after another party picture after another. And she actually looked like she had a fantastic time. She was in all sorts of events and all sorts of sporting events. and I mean, one picture after the other. But she was sweet. And I thought, I can't do this to her on the stand. Fortunately, the first witness they called was her father. I could do it to him on the stand. (laughs) So I got him on the stand and he had cried in direct examination and had gone on about how her life had changed. And so in using the photographs with him to identify all the activities she had in college and have him identify her in each one of those pictures, it worked perfectly. And I didn't have to make the jury mad at me for beating up on that young girl. That's really smart. It looked like the dad manufactured the whole thing. Because by the time the end of the case, the girl was honest. You know, she would say, yeah, you know, yeah, I joined a fraternity, a sorority, yeah. Sometimes I would go to parties. She would tell the truth. But she wouldn't have if you didn't. She didn't do that. She wouldn't have if... If if you went to done that with the dad, yeah. though, she changed. Did she change her story from her depot? I didn't ask her in her depot because I think we took it before she had been at college. It had been a couple of years. Ah, ago. right. So we didn't know. We didn't know what she would so, say. So so is is do you use do you do you play the card? Do you play the I got you something on social media? Do you play that in a depot or do you wait a trial? Because I remember you've, we've talked a lot about these tactics. You like to wait for trial I do. and really surprise the hell out of them. But I can't surprise them because it's a statement. In my mind, that's a statement. And so I wait to do all this research until shortly before trial, and then I supplement my interrogatories and send them all the pictures. So that was going to be my fun. next question. Yeah, that I was going to be my I, second some question. Some people would argue it's not a statement. I think it's a statement. So If I'm using it to show you're not injured, I think it's a statement. So your tendency is to use it at, to not even look until before trial right. and before trial look. And that was going to be my, the, next, the next question I wrote. Do you have to produce it? Yeah, I think we do. I may be wrong about that, but I would rather be wrong to the benefit of the plaintiff. I think an image of a plaintiff is a statement. I do of that too. Kind of if stuff. I'm going to use it to prove something because or of what it, it looks like. Or is it work product? Well, I think it's both. But I think the statement requirement, if it's somebody else, then it's one thing. But if it's the plaintiff, I think I... I think I have to show her. And so what you do is you, 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 you avoid the problem of having something and sitting on it for a year before you play the card by not having it till then. Right. And then timely producing it. Right. 
is this under Illinois and Missouri rules and federal rules? How would you how would you look at it? Any difference? Because remember, you and I did a CLE yeah. a couple of years ago about the difference in those. Yeah. Illinois and Missouri. Okay. Illinois for sure. The difference is but if there's, I'm there's, not there's getting that. it in through her, somebody has to identify it. Somebody has to identify the date. And it, otherwise it shouldn't come into evidence. Right. And that's the problem with federal court is getting it in. You've got to be able to authenticate it. And the only real reason, to, only real reason, way to file it as a as a um, authenticated document is to go to New York or California or wherever Instagram or Twitter or whatever you're trying to get it from. Their offices are and get them to do it. Take a deposition and get them to do it. Have you ever had to do that? Now, I almost did it one time. I had it all set up. I was going and finally the other side's like, I don't want to go here. Let's just agree. All right. All <laughs> so, right, all right. so I, but I almost did it once, and I did, and I have done it where I have. Opened up a miscellaneous file in New York. I forgot whether that's you, Instagram or what, but we were going up there to get the documents that were erased. Do you, do you, I hear you, I heard you. Do you, uh, do you, two questions. Do you worry that someone's going to make stuff private later that you can't find on social media? Two is, do you make the plaintiff produce their social media? Do you go to court orders for that to do it or do you just try to find it? I've done it all. Every bit of that, depending on what the situation was. I assume that the plaintiff is going to make it private. I also am not sure that I have the right to get a plaintiff who, from the beginning, had a private Facebook account, who erased things. I'm not sure I have the right, if I never was able to get there at all, I'm not sure I have the right to make them turn, me, turn over their whole Facebook account, although some people ask for it. Uh -huh. I do think I have the right to have her turn over a statement she makes about the, how the accident happened, potentially. But that's about it. And about her injuries, potentially. I get it asked. I always object. I never turn it over. I've gotten some more aggressive ones now where, like, give me the username and password. And, and I don't do it. Too. But I've never had anybody take it up with the court. Yeah, I've seen that, I've too. I've never had anybody call me on it. I have seen... Okay, so when cases where I've had a lot of parties in it, I've been a party where two other parties fought about it and got it. Got it turned over. It was crazy. And we got this big stuff in. I'll tell you what I do think I have the right to ask for, Facebook or otherwise. I think I have the right to ask the plaintiff for photographs of the injury, injured area of their body at any time after the accident. And so I did that in one case where I had a woman who had a broken wrist and some hand, fingers, some bones in her hand. And <clears throat> I had her on fa I had her on Facebook. And she, she said she couldn't move her hands, she couldn't put it in this position or that position. And she was on Facebook doing jazz hands and doing all these things that clearly showed she could still move her hand just fine. She was dancing, she was picking somebody up, and she couldn't use her hand for anything. Couldn't pick anything up, couldn't pick up a coffee cup, yet she picks this 130-pound girl up. So, so anyway, I, was, I did get an order to force them to give me all pictures. They did not give me all pictures because I then found these pictures on Facebook and that made the difference in that. So that was the second time I think social media has helped. But it's hard if you can't get her to admit that photograph was taken after the date of the accident. That you're not gonna be able to get it How in. How do you get in? How do you get it in? Fortunately, in both those cases, I had a relative do you, admit those things. And you surprised them a little bit, but if they're prepped for it and they just say, I don't know, I don't know, or deny, deny, then uh, then you can't publish that to the jury that's right. even. That's right. Uh, so you'd hand the photograph. So that's the roadmap for the, I often complain to, about defense lawyers and, and discovery stuff. I'm like, judge, you're giving them the roadmap not to produce any of this stuff uh, by the way you're ruling. But this is a roadmap for the plaintiff to not get that stuff in. Just say, I don't know, I don't know, or don't say, I don't know. Right. I was taken before. I can't remember if that was before or after. Uh, One other thing you got to look for if you're going to ask for stuff in discovery is, you know, they call them finstas. So fake Instagram with aliases, a lot of people have those. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I have a, a I have a daughter with that. But anyway, that's another story. Uh, I've been dealing <laughs> with that do. lately. Yeah, they just don't want you guys to see it. So Apparently. anything else on? Uh, so the same. Be be careful about investigations. Uh, but once you do it, if you're out surveilling someone, that's a statement. You got to produce that, right? You have to produce it, but it doesn't come into evidence unless I use it because it can only come into evidence as impeachment. 
So, so if I, I can't. A, so if you go, all right. Sorry, can I ask you? A, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I interrupted. I you. think we're saying the same thing. So you, you, you say it. I was you just say, you're gonna say, say it if I have a statement, and I, I mean, if I have a photo, a video. Let's say I've got somebody video and somebody carrying groceries into the house, and they testify, oh, I can carry anything, but not over twenty pounds, and I don't know how heavy those groceries are. I can't use that because it doesn't impeach them because I don't know if it was over twenty pounds, and they didn't say they couldn't carry groceries in the house. Can I use it? You can't use it at all. Why not? It's, an out of, it's hearsay. No, but can I, can I get... So can't I put my client on the stand and say, part of the damages here is the stress of going through litigation and what a jerks these people are and they've never taken responsibility no. and... <laughs> <laughs> Come on, no. I'm trying to make it better. And and they went out and they surveilled you and they did all this stuff and they got in it. And, and why can't I say that? Can't do it. It's why? not relevant. Yes, it is. No, it's relevant it to their emotional not. distress damages. Their 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 general the stress of having to go through litigation. They don't. They don't. The stress of having to go through litigation was not caused by the defendant. It was caused by the plaintiff and her attorney. Because they filed lawsuit. Nobody's mm-hmm. suing them. They don't have stress for going through litigation. They can get rid of that stress like that. Just file dismissal. Yeah, them. but you have to go through litigation in order to make a claim because this asshole defendant's never offered a dime in the case. Which is exactly the point. Because <laughs> the issue is, I want to complain because they didn't settle the case. Ah, it so the collateral boils, source. So I stepped into your to, trap. Yes, it all boils down to settlement issues. Yeah, That's but you what still... her emotional... Her, she's emotionally distressed because the case has not settled. And that's a normal frustration with litigation. Ah, see, I've, ah, uh, ah, uh, that's an interesting issue. Do, you, do, you, do you file really a motion to eliminate on that if you think someone's going to talk about it? Or if you... I have, yeah, if I've done surveillance and I'm not going to use it, I'll file a motion to eliminate. Ah, so you're getting the judge to rule on that from the beginning. You've obviously argued that. I really haven't. I haven't had many people surveilled because. Long time since I've done it. I yeah. think comp still does it a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So then the next question you were going to ask, we were going to talk about social media in the last year and some of the developments. But, but before we get there, can you, you wanted to ask me about what I do with jurors. I do. I, my, I've, I don't look, I don't have time to look at their social media during trial. Do you look up a juror's social media? Well, let me just say this. The reason I'm interested in this is because I wouldn't have thought about it until the last six months, but everything on social media now is political. So do you look at their social media and what do you, and why and how do you use it? So what I do, it depends on the, depends on the venue. So there's some places where I try a case where I get the jury list like a half hour before they walk in the door and then I, and I'm, then I don't have time Right. To do that. Uh, but there are some places where I get the list on the Friday before the Monday or the Thursday. So then I will send my someone over to the courthouse and we'll, we'll pick up the sheets and we'll bring them back. And then everybody's working this week and everybody takes 10 people or something. And, and, and I have various paralegals who will go through and find out what they know about these people. Did they like? And it's, and it's total litmus test painting with too broad a brush. Did they like every, did they, are they reposting uh, Bill O'Reilly and Laura Ingram stuff? Bill O'Reilly's gone. Or are they big, um, are they reposting stuff? Sometimes it's private, you can't see. Sometimes some of it's private, some of it's past. What pages do they like? Are they big, um, you, you get their political leanings that way. Um, or do they seem you know, liberal and stuff? Do they like, interestingly, it doesn't matter whether or not they like dogs because there are conservative dog people and liberal dog people because everybody loves dogs. That's probably exactly right. That's the thing. So I do. And I look for them and then I have, and then I have my sheet and then when I, and then I'll have my little research sheet on them and some people you can't find anything about. Um, So we do it. Now I haven't hired like a company to go do it or stuff. We do it internally. um, And some people we can't find that. You know, I ask, it's the same, The do you ever ask this question, Vordire, where do you get your news? No, but I've heard people ask it. Uh, how do you think, what do you like that? I think it's terrible. It's terrible. You, you know, I had one time I was, <laughs> I had a juror standing up <laughs> and I was talking to him and he was in the back row and I was, had a great conversation and I, and I just thought, I go, you know what, I'm going to try it. And, and I go, so let me ask you this, because I figured he was conservative. I go, where do you get your news? And he, and he, without missing a beat, he looked at me and goes, why are you trying to find out if I'm liberal or conservative for your jury? And I was like, oh shit, yes. That's <laughs> hilarious. I mean, he called me on it right away and it was right. He was right. Yeah. Um, 
and yeah. uh, and I said, uh, I said, well, I, I actually, you know, I said, kinda, but I also want to know because of the politicization of various news sources, I want to know because that tells me and gives me information, the kind of information you get about pain and suffering damages or what people think about plaintiff's lawyers and that kind of stuff. And I already asked you all about that because I want to know that. And, and I, so I, I didn't really want to fight him because I, what, yeah. what I want to say is, yeah, but you've been lying to me. And I, because I know if all you are is a Fox News guy or now OLM or whatever this new network that Trump likes right. is, that, right. uh, um, which is whatever. Anyway, all right, so the answer is yes. Do you do that? Uh, I do not. I, well, let me put it this way. I have not done that. I would do that probably now that I've heard you talk about it, as just mostly to find out what people are interested in. And also the conservative part would help too, you know what I mean. But sometimes I would probably cross that person out just because I didn't like them because of what they said on the Internet. So I have to be careful about that. But, yes, I think that reviewing the social media, of the, the juror's social media can help, too, because it can also tell you whether or not they have, whether or not they fall into the category of people I've identified that I want to choose from. Is this a person who is married with kids, et cetera, et cetera? I might not know that. I may not know that when I'm looking at them. And you know, I don't want to ask them that in trial. So, yeah, I think it could be helpful. See, I don't take it much past... The profile of the I don't do it Republican. to the level of the profile of the juror, but yeah, during the political yeah. times, it's a lot easier. Yeah, <clears throat> if everything they have is one thing, we should probably make would clear. you try to get pro conservative, pro Republican, pro the the, the, the typical uh, 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 stereotype of a defense juror? Um, I'll tell you what. If I were looking at it, what I'd look for, I would look for socioeconomic status. If I could tell that from Facebook, I would look for what I could tell about what his parents did. I could tell, look, about, look to see where I think he came from originally, what other towns he's lived in. So is he more likely to have small town or big city thoughts? You know what I mean? I would look at um, what he does for a living, if I can find that. I can look at his educational background, if I can find that. And I would look to see. Well, wouldn't you know some of that already some from of the it, jury some questionnaires? Of some of it you would, yeah. You would know his age, right? But you wouldn't know his educational background. Well, you might because of his job. You might, if he's a lawyer, you know his educational background, right? But I'd like to see those sorts of things. Is this a guy who grew up in Perryville, Missouri, who went to Stanford? That's a complicated person. Well, the thing though, too, is what I do is is I try to go beyond those stereotypes. You know, do you want a manager? Do you want an executive versus a blue collar? Right. Do you want a union guy versus this? Do you want to... I try to... Because there are people who are executives who can be pretty progressive people and want a big money. There can be That's union right. workers, people who can be very, very conservative, especially now with this political climate. I mean, we right. have... I mean, the, uh, the our president has tapped into this not low income but not you know this level of conservatism where it's not a bunch of rich people in limousines yeah. that are voting very conservatively and very negative views towards lawsuits right right what i do do gary instead of social media is i contact lawyers who have lived in that town or that county forever and who know these people when you go to a town to try a case right. in that town right do you ever ask them to be your second chair, you, in a jury selection? Sometimes, but more often I you want... You told me a story about yeah, that one time. probably. More often I want them to make me a list. I want you to tell me what's going on in this person's life. Who is she? What's same sort of questions I'd look for on social media. All right, let's go to our last thing is... Um, oh, I was going to tell you this. Remember, too, we need to tell the people listening to this, we cannot friend, like, or do anything to interact with those people. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, we don't do anything to try to surreptitiously or secretly get into their stuff. We see what's public, and that's it. If it ain't public, we don't know. And we often say, we know this person has a social media, but everything's private, and I don't know anything about yeah. it. And that's fine. Yeah. We would never try to... Or, and you also, you, here's the thing. You can't have one of your friends friend them. No. Or that kind of stuff. That's you right. Can't, it, you can't, it's in violation of that rule, whatever the rule is, that you, says you, lawyers can't be in contact, can't communicate with jurors. And let's be clear. And for any jurors who might listen to this podcast, let's be clear. We want to honor their privacy, honor the 
the the the the citizenship responsibility that you're stepping up to do to be a juror in the case. So we're not going to investigate them. We're not going to pry in anything else. We just want to see what they put out there publicly because if they're if they put things out there publicly, that's something that they would say in voir dire, and it's a short circuit way to get to that information. There is a rule, I think it's 35B, I just found this, and that is that is that the ABA has issued a formal opinion that the fact that a juror or potential juror might become aware that a lawyer reviewed his or her internet presence does not violate the lawyer's obligation not to communicate with the jury. So what you we've been talking about is perfectly acceptable under the ABA rules as long as nobody goes beyond that and messengers them or friends them or likes anything on their page. I think it's acceptable. Right. You want to stay away from the jurors. You don't want to get into their private life. You don't want to talk to them. You don't want to communicate with them at any time before or pers- and the prospective jurors. But I think it's fair to see what they uh just like if they would have written a letter to the editor or anything like that you right. can get the stuff that they put out in the public on their views political views right that may affect your case most of the time i'll tell you i don't i do it but more and more people have pro- everything private now so i'm getting relative a lot lower percentage of information than i used to uh, quickly on the what you talked about it a minute ago, Debbie. What it, what about social media in the last year? Uh, 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 how has it changed, and and how does that affect uh, us as lawyers? So it's funny. One of my associates came in the other day, and he said, "Wow, you're getting political on Facebook." Well, I rarely let my politics be known, and so I would never put anything on Facebook that was political. That's what I said six months ago, and. Uh, you know, when I first got on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, there weren't that many political comments of people that I was associated with. And now, all day, every day, it's all one extreme to the other. It's a, it seems like we've all moved not just to very diverse positions, but also to telling everybody every thought and every opinion we ever had about anything they said. So it's really changed. And so I think that if you can see some of the social media that people do or participate in, if you can do that, you will also know what kind of juror they might be. How outgoing are they going to be with respect to their opinions about this particular case? Or are they going to just have their own opinion and sit there and nurse that opinion and not really share it with other people. I mean, it's possible that some of those people who have been so front and center on their opinions be more likely to do that in the jury room, too. That's really a smart thought about how the uh, proclaiming their... uh, Well, I have Do Not Disturb on. Sorry about the... Sorry about the ringing, everybody. Um, uh, hung up on whoever's calling. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, that's really smart about that, about how that may change their behavior in, a, in, a, in, a, in deliberations um, if they've been um, reinforced to be more outgoing with yeah. their opinions. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm like, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm like, why does everybody have an opinion now on everything? That they every care time to share. That they have to, I'm like, who are you? Do, do, are you have a PhD in sociology? Are you an economist? Are you a... Because I am an economist. Are and you? I, is well, that I, mean, I mean, you know, that was my degree or whatever, and I read a lot about it. Or I'm like, yeah, I get you have an opinion, but... And, 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 I, and I, I'm going to say, this may sound a little snotty, but I'm like... Did your mother not give you enough attention <laughs> or your friends not give you attention in high school that you're making up for this because... It's weird. You know, I remember in law school, and I remember that was 30-something years ago, I had a really good friend. And lawyers are generally opinionated. And he gave his opinion about something. I couldn't even remember what it was. And I disagreed with him. And he, I didn't say anything at that point in time. And then he asked me, what do you think about that? And I told him. And so he continue, he then told me more about his opinion and why he held that opinion. And after we had that discussion, he said, so have you changed your mind? And I, I remember that striking me as the weirdest question. And I said, are you asking whether I've changed my opinion? And he said, yeah. And I said, well, no. Why would I change my opinion just because you think a different way? And I never understood that. I always thought that was foreign. 
And he laughed and thought, wow, I thought I had the obligation to try to talk somebody into changing their opinion. It's just a different way we looked at life. And now everybody thinks they can change your opinion. I and you just, know what? Nobody's opinion gets changed exactly. by Facebook posts. Zero. Exactly. My and you're not teaching anybody anything they don't know. I've had, Generally. you know, this last three and a half years as president, say I've had to unfriend people or they've unfriended me or whatever. And I'm kind, I'm political, but um, I, I don't make a lot of comments. I send it out there. I'll do a post or I'll share an article yeah. or a graph or this. But I am not, but then I won't sit there and debate because I'm not going to persuade you. I'm just going to anger you. I'm putting it out there. That's kind of how I do it. And I'm not saying that's right because people probably think I'm too political. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. I've gotten more political or I've been a little bit more out there. And I try not to do that because I have clients of all types. And I have Facebook friends of all types. And I try not to do it. But Have you unfriended people or no, gotten rid of people? No, See, I have. No, I've unfollowed no. people. I've had some people just say really... I have people kind of know I'm liberal and kind of uh, I have good friends who like want to just get and they know my friends are so they they know they can like throw a little bomb into Facebook yeah. and let it explode and see all the all the all the all these limousine liberals kind of go you know crazy so yeah. they like to stir it up a little bit sometimes. Well, remember I'm from Kentucky, so whatever you put on my Facebook, if it's pro or con, I'm gonna have a lot of people supporting each. It's gonna be weird. I, I used but. to have more conservative friends. I just haven't don't have as many anymore. And I don't know if it's that or if it's the Facebook logarithm of who they're showing or what they're showing. What I don't know. I can't. Figure I don't out. know whether that's legit or not. I don't know either. Um, I will tell you that I, I said I hadn't defriended anybody. I have defriended two people. And it just thought about it when I was thinking about my people, the wide variety of people that I have friends, that I'm friends on Facebook with. And during the Obama years, I had a friend on Facebook who said things that I thought the Secret Service should probably be after him about. So I decided I should defriend him, and I did. And then during this period with Trump, I had a friend who was saying things that I thought the Secret Service would probably be after him. <laughs> Those are the only two I've defriended. I had one on one extreme and then the other, both of whom probably should have been arrested. <laughs> so I had it. There was a lawyer that I knew about two years ago that was putting repeated Nazi stuff up. What? And you know what? That I just draw the line on that, and I complained about him, uh, and, and I unfriended him, and, and he was friends with me for a long time. Uh, I just, I'd like, listen, and then I, and then... What in the world? Some of this, uh, you know, I did, un, I did, some conservative people, when they got, they keep going to this, Obama was an, a Muslim terrorist stuff, that I... Uh, sometimes I can ignore it. Sometimes I just got to say, listen. I, you know, Facebook has a new... Oh, I found this out this weekend. New, and I, I know we got to close this down. They have this thing on, a, on status of membership where it's not just unfriend. You can take a break. Oh, right. I've seen so that. So I now see this take a break. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take a break from some of these people because I don't want them, everybody getting in fights with each other on these posts I do. I'll take a break from somebody if they post seven, eight, nine times a day, and that's all I see on well, this Facebook. this racism stuff is, it's really the last month. I mean, I have more white people that are just so incensed with these 